Today, we're going to build a mirror so awesome that it still looks good even when my reflection is in it. The skies were angry that day, my friend. Just kidding. But from the safety of my garaje, that's Spanish for my garage, this project started off like all the rest, with me selecting a piece of wood and cutting off the chunk that I'd need to use. This is walnut, by the way. Luckily, the piece was pretty good and flat, so I didn't need to join or plane any of the faces. I just joined one of the edges so that I could use it on the fence of my table saw. So with that out of the way, I ripped everything into some strips that would yield the pieces that I'm going to need. And that consisted of two vertical leg pieces, two horizontal pieces, four pieces that make up the frame of the mirror, and one little back piece that ties the legs together and gives a spot for attaching the whole thing to the wall, if you're into that. Next, I worked on the leg pieces. I started by setting my miter gauge to 8.5 degrees and made a cut on the part of the tall vertical piece that hits the ground and the part of the short horizontal piece that hits the wall. Eventually, these two are going to come together to make a 90 degree angle. So making these two cuts are going to make the leg lean forward the way that I want it to aesthetically and leave the back of the horizontal piece at an angle that's parallel to the wall so you can mount it. Again, if you're into that sort of thing. Anyhow, once those two pieces were cut, I marked out the finished length of the pieces and then made another cross cut. Then I marked out the taper that I wanted and cut the long piece over at the bandsaw. For the shorter pieces, I did the same thing, only instead of cutting the taper on the bandsaw, I used my tapering jig on the table saw. Pro tip, for better dust collection at the table saw, hook your dust collector up to your table saw. Oops. Okay, so the last thing to do before I could join the legs was to cut miters at the intersection. Earlier I said that this would come together to form a 90, so you'd think it would just be two 45 degree angles, but it's not. And that's because of the tapers that we cut. Well, I take that back actually. You could cut at 45 and you'd get a right angle overall, but the pieces would end up looking like this, instead of like this. So it actually comes out to some weird angle like 44.2 for one of them, and then 45.8 for the other. It just depends on how you cut your tapers. Anyhow, once those were cut, I mortised in some dominoes and then glued them up. And with those set aside, I started working on the frame for the mirror. So these are just going to be four mitered pieces with a rabbit for the mirror to set in. Nothing really too complicated. The only tricky part is that I'm leaving this really tiny little reveal around the perimeter. It's only about an eighth of an inch wide. So that just means that any little errors are going to be way more noticeable. If you wanted to make things easier, give yourself an inch wide reveal or maybe even no reveal at all, and you'll have fewer headaches. But I like to make things hard, I guess. So here we are. So I started off by making a really shallow pass on all of my frame pieces. This is going to be determined by how thick your mirror is and how big of a reveal you want. And in my case, it's just that little bit to the left of the screen in this shot. Next, I raised my blade, turned my workpiece vertical, and took another pass to clear out the rest of the material to complete the rabbit. One thing I should mention is that before I did this, I noticed that my frame pieces were a little more bent than I would have liked them to be. So I marked the sides that bowed in and made sure that the face frame would be assembled with those pieces in. Like this. And not like that. My thinking was that since the mirror is a rectangle, it'll force the bowed edges to be straight. And in the end, it seemed like it all worked out. Finally, I could cut my 45 degree angles on the ends of each of the four pieces. And I just kind of worked my way around the mirror, taking measurements and cutting until I felt like everything was good and then I attached the mirror to the wood using some construction adhesive. And while I'm doing that, let me take a second to thank Mac Weldon for sponsoring this video. Now, you might be asking yourself, who is Mac Weldon? But it's not a who, it's a what. And more specifically, 
It's a premium men's essential brand that believes in smart design and premium fabrics. Now I didn't want to just take their word for it, so I tried them out for myself. Ordered a pair of underwear, a pair of socks, a t-shirt, and a pair of Ace sweatpants. And after wearing and living with them for a couple weeks, while I can't confirm that they believe in premium fabrics, I can say that they definitely use them. Seriously, check out their website. I'm the kind of guy who doesn't love shopping, whether that's in-store or online. But since Mack Weldon only makes the hits, it's quick to find what you want, order it, and get on with your day. Plus, the stuff is just super quality. When you put yours on, you're going to know what I'm talking about. So right now, you can go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off your order by using the promo code 4 eyes. And every time you put on your new underwear, think of me. Actually, don't. Let's draw the line at socks. Okay, thanks, Mac Weldon. While that was setting up overnight, I worked on the dumb smart mirror aspect of the build. So here's how you're gonna do that. And the awesome news is, you don't have to know anything about electronics to do this, but you do need to know a little something about Photoshop. So first you remind everybody that today is April 1st, and then you make a thumbnail that trolls everybody and hope that it doesn't backfire super hard. All right, I'm sorry, honestly I am, but I guess I just couldn't help myself. And if you're not watching this on the day it was released, I'm doubly sorry. Because now it's a joke that doesn't even make sense. But happy April Fool's Day. Hope you're not too mad. Some good news. This doesn't just work on straight-on shots. It works on angled shots, too. Is that redeeming a little bit? Too late? Oh, well, I tried. Let's just move on. So the next day I cut the piece that'll tie the two legs together in the back to its final dimensions, and I installed it. Here I'm just using glue, but I'm going to come back a little bit later and screw it in. And while that was clamped up still and drying, I decided to mount the mirror panel to the legs using a few screws. Initially I was going to aim to have the mirror tilt back at a 5 degree angle, but instead of measuring anything, I just kind of held it there until my wife thought that it felt right, and then I had her hold it while I locked it off. And then finally the last thing to do was cut some plugs to cover the screw holes, clean everything up, and had some finish. I remember when I was a little kid, probably like, I don't know, seven or eight years old, sometimes I'd look at myself in the mirror and think, that's me. How crazy is this? I'm living this life right now. It's like I was so conscious and present in those moments that it almost felt like it was a dream, if that makes any sense. Like I was watching a movie of my life through my eyes, and in that moment it was on pause. Now, 30 years later, and reflecting back on those moments, as I'm saying this, I can't help but think, how fucking high was I? Special thanks to James Montague, Rost, Figments Made, Danny Ross, Adrian Orozco, Dave Baker, Thomas Dragseth, and the rest of my Patreon members for making these videos possible. Unlike looking at myself in the mirror, when I think about all the generosity and support you've all given me, it actually makes me feel good. Seriously, though, it's hard for me to express how grateful I truly am, but thank you. And if you want to support the show, too, check out the Patreon link in the description. And as always, no pressure. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.